Every so often, the Magic of the Gathering community gets a little excited, and anyone following the discourse around the new companion mechanic knows that this is one of those times. I'm Connor. And I'm Jack. And this is Building Better Dungeons. So, what's going on? In your everyday, ordinary Magic of the Gathering deck, you've got 60 cards. For those unfamiliar, most cards have costs you need to pay by using land cards. You need to use about 20 of those. For your actual spells that impact the game, you can have up to 4 copies of any particular card in your deck. Usually, this ensures that the game has an inherent amount of variance. You're not guaranteed to have any given card in your opening hand. I mean, there are going to be games when all four copies of a specific card are the bottom four cards of your deck. In comes Companion. Vicoria, Lair of Behemoths, has ten legendary creatures with this ability. Each has a restriction, and if no card in your deck violates this restriction, you can cast the card from outside the game, just once. Take Lutri, for example. He does something when he enters the battlefield, but it's not really important right now. What matters is that if you have only one copy of all the non-land cards in your deck, you can cast the tree from outside the game. He's effectively an 8th card in your opening hand, if your deck meets the conditions. In certain formats, where you already can't have more than one copy of any particular card, Commander and Brawl for example, this elemental otter has already been banned. But, so what's the big deal? You cripple your deck to get a free card in your opening hand. There's an interesting tension there, right? Is having a companion worth its deck building cost? Do you think about the cards available to you differently, knowing whether or not they can fit into a particular companion deck? Is it fun to be able to consistently build around a legendary creature? That's why Commander is popular in the first place, isn't it? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. So let's get into it. Variance and Power Level Let's look at a card in particular. Demonic Tutor. Two mana, search your deck for any card, put it in your hand. This card is iconic and very powerful. As a proud owner, thanks to the recent mystery boosters, I can say Demonic Tutor is lovely. In more casual formats, like Commander, you can decide whether you want to use it to make a great deck broken, or to make a casual, for fun deck have the tools it needs to punch above its weight. In more competitive environments, this card is by and large banned. The consistency it offers at such a low cost was simply too powerful for most formats to withstand. In many ways, Companion is like casting a Demonic Tutor for free at the beginning of every game. And it doesn't even cost you a card. Much of the discussion around the Companion mechanic is about power level and the effect on the meta. There's a real fear that Standard will become completely defined by decks using the Companion mechanic. You wouldn't reprint Demonic Tutor in Standard. So how is this okay? Well, for one, these cards don't necessarily lend themselves well to combos. Each of them restricts either type of card in your deck, or the consistency of your deck in general. Demonic Tutor was at its worst when it enabled combos that won the game on the spot, whereas Companion is a much less explosive advantage. But is that advantage still too strong? In this thread on the Spike subreddit, a forum dedicated to competitive magic, you see a popular argument. Either Companion is worth it, or it's not. Either a card's restrictions are so severe it can't possibly see any play, or they're easy enough to work around that the card becomes ever-present and busted. You gotta be careful here. That last argument is actually a fallacy. Just because companion cards are either worth running or not, doesn't mean that their decks are either broken or unplayable. It's perfectly easy to imagine that a strategy is improved by the addition of a companion while still only being a tier 2 deck. And don't get us wrong here, there are reasons to dislike the mechanic. But, if you think the design is bad because they're either unplayable or completely busted, you need to justify why a companion deck couldn't just be tier 2 or fair. Yeah, an extra card is powerful, a specific extra card to build your whole deck around even more so. But ask yourself, what does variance in magic really achieve? Do you actually play constructed formats because every matchup plays out differently? I don't know if that's been the case in Standard for a while now. Four ofs and decks are largely going to appear in most games anyway, companion or no. Variance in modern magic is actually largely a tool to limit the effectiveness of combo decks. Does any companion really fit into a backbreaking combo in Standard? But we're not just talking about Standard, are we? Eternal Formats It's easy to see. Companions are making waves in Eternal Formats. Lurus is the clearest example. These are formats where card advantage matters the most, and having a free card in your opening hand that can net you further cards in the long run? Turns out that's ridiculous. Other cards are also making a name for themselves. Garuda in particular enables a turn zero win in some formats. That's incredibly frustrating for these enfranchised players. When we posted a reddit thread asking what people thought about the mechanic, this was the one of the most discussed topics. But this is something that we as a community need to grapple with. For a while there, new cards were low enough in power level to rarely make splashes in older formats that have access to more powerful cards. 
but this seems to be a thing of the past. From Teferi to Narset to Oko, the last couple of sets have made it clear. Cards are coming every set that are powerful enough to shake up older formats. There's a variety of reasons for this. Play Design has said that higher power formats are, perhaps counterintuitively, easier to balance. One of Kaladesh's problems was that the broken cards that slipped through the cracks were so much more powerful than the other cards around them that those cards couldn't compete. So now, we have powerful standards that shake up even older formats. Perhaps to an unhealthy degree. If Legacy or Vintage are one of your favourite formats, we can understand the anger. Soon we might see the historic event of a new card being banned in a format where new cards haven't been banned in a very long time. But should Legacy and Vintage, or even Modern or Pioneer, be weights around the neck of contemporary magic design? Balancing for Standard, a format that can have around 2,000 cards in it, is already a Herculean task. Is it reasonable for players of older formats to demand that Standard marches to their rhythm? Standard is where newer players live, players who might really leave the game if their own deck gets banned. Legacy and Vintage players might have to learn to roll with the punches to withstand a few turbulent weeks before problematic new cards are banned or restricted. There are arguments on both sides, but if you hate Companion just because of its impact on older formats, know that you have to justify why older formats should have such a huge say on the design of Standard. After all, with the introduction of Magic Arena, most players are Standard players. Speaking of Arena... Digital versus Paper. There has been an anxiety in the Magic community for some time about the growing presence of Arena. This free-to-play digital platform now gets Standard sets even before Paper does, sometimes significantly before. Though the available formats on the platform are scant, its player base is gargantuan. Paper coverage has been cut, and more and more tournaments are Magic Arena only. Since Guilds of Ravnica, we've seen more and more cards seemingly designed with best of one in mind. Cards like Knight of Autumn or Crushing Canopy show that they want sideboard cards to be more flexible and even runnable in the main board. This is likely because best of one is the premier format on Magic Arena. But Ikoria has kicked this paper versus digital discussion into high gear. Number one, cycling really accentuates that point that you just made. But keyword counters are also tricky to keep track of in paper, but trivial to do so in digital. Mutate as a mechanic is more confusing than we're really used to seeing in paper magic, but the digital client handles those rules for you, and that means complexity isn't as much of a problem. Companion is where this really comes into play. Each of the companions has a negative restriction, not a positive one. They say you can't play certain cards, not that you must play certain cards. Notice that Kahira, the Orphan Guard, is technically playable in a creatureless control deck because the restriction prevents you from running creatures outside of her tribes. She doesn't require you to run cards within those tribes. Why does this matter? Well, it means that the mechanic is actually kind of built for paper. In Arena, cheating is impossible, because it's a digital platform, so you don't have to worry about it. But even at Friday Night Magic, at your local game store, cheating actually has no value. If your opponent runs a Growth Spiral in your Karuga Companion deck, for instance, they actually can't cast the Growth Spiral without you realizing they're cheating, so there isn't any benefit to having it. Despite this mechanic being restricted to working as smoothly as possible within paper, players are still anxious about the growing presence of digital magic in our community. Much of the discussion in the aforementioned Reddit thread is about how little this feels like regular magic, and how much it feels like Hearthstone. This is an anxiety we can sympathize with. Wizards is a for-profit subsidiary owned by a gigantic parent company, and Arena is incredibly profitable. As it grows bigger and bigger, and more and more expensive to keep up with, Play design is going to be influenced more and more by the digital nature of the client. And if you're afraid of the format you love becoming subservient to a digital facsimile, well, maybe you should be. Oh, we've got nothing for you. So, was Companion a mistake? Maybe. Or maybe it's just a herald of dark tidings to come. Who's to say? Hey Jack, want to play a friendly game of Brawl on Arena? No, Connor. I hate Brawl. Let's play Pauper on X-Mage instead. Uh, thank you for listening. If you want to chat more about Magic the Gathering, feel free to join our Discord below. If you're into D&D in particular, you should love it. Uh, if you want more videos about Magic Controversies, let us know. We read every comment. The mean ones, we read twice. <laughs>